This video is sponsored by Brilliant. I just created a GPT that extracts data from websites. I call it Script GPT. That said, it doesn't actually go to the website and scrapes data or extracts the data from an HTML file, as I showed you in a previous video. In this case, we're going to use a different approach that will help us extract data from websites by just telling what data we want to get. Once we see how this works, we're gonna quickly create a GPT to automate all of this. All right, before we start with this video, know that this method isn't going to be appropriate for all websites out there, but it's still powerful and very easy to use. With that in mind, let's build a scrape GPT. All right, to start from scratch, I created this regular chat with GPT-4, and now let's track data from a website. So here I have a website that I, I just opened, and well, this is Udemy, and let's extract the items that we see here. In this case are web scraping courses. So I went to Udemy, I typed web scraping, I have this list of courses. And let's say that I want to extract all these courses from all these pages, or at least for the first three pages. So in the previous video, I showed you that you can scrape all this data by saving this page as HTML. And that's a good method, but you need to give the HTML element of each element that you want to extract. And sometimes some HTML files are a bit complex and that uh, that doesn't help us extract the data that we want. So this approach is a bit different and it works with some websites. And what we're gonna do is just save this page as PDF and then ask ChatGPT to extract data. So if you're on Chrome, what you're gonna do is go to files and then click on print. And you're gonna get this and in layout, you have to choose landscape. Otherwise you're gonna get this uh, this save as in the mobile version and we don't want that. We want this, the complete version. So you're gonna uh, get this as PDF, then you click save and that's how you get these search results. And Chrome works fine for most websites, but in some websites it doesn't uh, export all the PDF properly. Some, some parts of the page are not visible. And what I do is sometimes use another website sorry, another browser. In this case, I'm gonna use Safari. Safari is also very useful. So here we have Safari. And if you're in Safari, you can go to file and then export as PDF. So far, Safari hasn't failed me and it's working fine for most websites. So here I click on save, search results, Udemy. And once you have the file, you can go and open the file and see that all the page was exported as PDF. So this is the, the same page that we had before, but now in PDF format. So what we have to do now is go to ChatGPT and create our prompt. So here I'm going to ChatGPT and we're gonna type the following prompt. And here's the prompt, extract data from the file. And well, I'm gonna upload the PDF file that we exported before and it's this one. Then I say, here's the data you should extract from the first item. So I'm giving the first item as a sample. So if we go here to Udemy again, we see that we have the first item, we have the instructor, we have the name of the course, ratings, and the total hours. And that's what I copied and pasted here. So this is just a sample to guide ChatGPT. And then I, I tell ChatGPT that it has to extract the same data for the rest of the items. So it's gonna repeat the same process for the, all the items that we can see here. And that's what it's gonna do. You can also add some extra notes depending on the website that you're working with. And we're gonna tweak this prompt a little bit later when we create that GPT. So here I'm gonna press enter and see what happens. All right, now we see that ChatGPT printed the 20 items that are in the Udemy website. And to verify that everything was correctly extracted, we're gonna check this last item, learn a Python skill in seven days from scratch, web scraping, and this is the last item. So we see that it's 4.616 uh, reviews and 4.5 hours. So we can see 4.616 reviews or ratings and 4.5 hours. So we can see that all the data was successfully extracted, all the 20 items. And now I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to export this as a CSV file. All right, I wrote, put this data in a table and export it as a CSV file. Now I press enter and we're gonna get our CSV file with all this data. All right, for some reason right now I got an error message and this is very weird because right now I already have data and it should only export this data into a CSV file, which is very easy. And I wanna demonstrate to you that this actually works with this previous test that I did. This is another tab. And well, here I said the same, export this to a CSV file and I got that it was successfully exported to a CSV file and I have the link. So I only have to click the link and I get the, the file. In this case, I cannot get the file because the code interpreter session expired, but I have the file and I'm gonna open it up right now. 
All right, here I have the CSV file, and as you can see, we have the 20 items in this file. And well, you can verify that even the last item that we checked before is the same, 4.6, uh, learn a Python skill in seven days, from scratch, web scraping, and 4.5 hours. And this is actually this course that we see listed at the end of this page. And well, we successfully exported all this data, and now let's create our GPT from this prompt. All right, to create the GPT, you have to go to the sidebar and then click on Explore. And then we have to click Create a GPT. So you can create a GPT with a GPT Builder, or you can manually create it in the Configure section. So here now I'm in Configure, and now I'm gonna name my GPT, I'm gonna name it as Scrape GPT, and then I'm gonna put in parentheses Tutorial, just to have a different name from the one that I already have. And then in the instructions, I'm gonna paste that same prompt, but I'm gonna do some tweaks. And this is the instructions that I'm gonna paste. So here you have to extract data from all the items listed in the file, this is the same. And then, well, to guide you, the user will give you the data you should extract from the first item. And you have to extract the same data as for as many items as you can. I put this last sentence because sometimes uh, it doesn't extract all the data, it stops in one point, and well, with this, I'm making sure that it extracts as much data as it can. And then I say that you have to put the data extracted on the table and export it to a CSV file. And finally, I add some notes that you may need depending on the website that you're working with. In this case, these two notes are enough for me. You can add the description if you want, and we don't need any conversation starters. And here I'm gonna limit the capabilities to only code interpreter because it's the one that we're gonna use. Then we click on save and then we can extract data by just giving the data that we want to extract from the website. So now to follow the same example that we have before with Udemy, I'm gonna paste this, which is the first item of that PDF and then that should be enough. Well, I need to upload that PDF too, of course. So here I have the PDF then I'm gonna wait until it's uploaded and then press enter. All right, here I got a preview of the data that was extracted. I have the first six or five elements and then I have the CSV file that I can click here to download. So here I have the CSV file and if I make this smaller, I should be able to click here on the CSV file that I downloaded. Udemy courses, or this is the second file. And well, it's the same as the, the first one I got. So here I have the the course title, then I have the instructors, I have 20 items, as you can see, all the data was extracted. So this is the first one I showed you before, this is the second one that we got with GPT. And as you can see, it's the same data as we got before, it's exactly the same. So this is how you do it, this is this approach that I showed you, and now I'm gonna mention some little problems that you can encounter. So first we have the type of website that you want to extract data from. So here I'm going to Safari, and I have here other types of website. For example, this first Udemy had all the items listed in this vertical list. And sometimes you might have some elements in the middle. For example, here you have um, in Amazon.com, you have a vertical list, but you have some elements in the middle. And this might be an issue. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And well, then you have also on Amazon.com, this type of lists that don't have many items in the middle. For example, here I have only one, but here I have like four or five. And with this one works just fine. I tried it and it extracted all this data because it doesn't have many elements in the middle. Sometimes you can help ChatGPT telling that there is some elements in the middle or that ignore some type of elements. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And now regarding ChatGPT, there is some issues sometimes. Sometimes ChatGPT gets a bit dumb because it extracts data with the regular GPT-4 conversation, but then when you try to do it in uh, in the GPT, for example, right now I created this script GPT and I try to do this automatically just by giving the names of the data I want to extract, sometimes it fails, even though it doesn't fail in the regular GPT-4 chat. So it's some issues that OpenAI right now has with GPT. Sometimes it's they are not as smart as a regular GPT for chat for some reason. Hopefully that's gonna change in the future. And also even in the regular GPT for chat, sometimes it doesn't do what you want. As you've seen before, it didn't give me the the link to the CSV file because it couldn't export the data to a CSV file, and that's very weird because that's pretty easy. 
And well, that's some some of the issues that we might encounter and that hopefully OpenAI is going to, to fix. All right, today we learned an easy approach to extract data from some websites using ChatGPT. That said, this approach has some limitations, as I mentioned before. And if you want to overcome these limitations, of course, you need to learn how to code and then learn Python and web scraping. And a tool that I'm using to improve my coding skills and my analytical thinking is Brilliant.org which is the sponsor of this video. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from math to computer science with new lessons added monthly. What I like about Brilliant is that it helps you learn by doing. For example, in the computer science course, I can create programs with drag and drop coding and more interactive exercises that keep my skills sharp. This is important if you want to truly master computer science concepts and also Python and develop your computational and algorithm thinking. On my experience, this is more important than just memory memorizing a bunch of formulas and code. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free, for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash thepycoach. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. All right, let me know in the comment section if you found this approach useful and which websites you scraped using this approach. And that's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.